When you get a good guy friend, especially straight, it can feel like a miracle. The platonic love is almost richer than the romantic one because it shows you the safety of emotionally connecting with your opposite, especially when you have learned how that opposite can be physically and mentally dangerous towards you. Benita was one of my friends, uh, my good guy friends that never f fell in love with me and vice versa. If anything, we bonded over our humor and deep desire to have and be loved, despite the painful father we were cosmically born to have. While my father prided himself on being abusive in every way except physically, Benito's dad was a different case. He mopped the effing floor with us, he said to me crying, literally took us by the effing head and smashed our heads on the floor. All he needed was to pour some Lysol and we would have been his effing cleaning-ish. He was angry because his sister, whom he called, um, whom called him the father she should have had, was restarting a relationship with the one she did. He called me for advice trying to understand the female perspective of yearning for a horrible father just because they were your dad. I think it's the feeling of needing to know you did everything and said everything to make them see how they turn you into nothing. I replied in my usual esoteric vernacular. Even till this day, I relive conversations with my dad and wonder if I really told him everything I felt and if I, I had just said this thing, would he have become better towards me? We think our words can materially spark their fists away. Yet why were they punching us down, you know? As I write this, I realize I do speak like a Jesus parable. When is enough effing enough, he yelled. Benito was a soft king. Rarely did he lose his composure, an attribute I attributed to his father's abuse, a somehow subconscious way of telling the world he was way more cool-headed than his violent father. I understood because I overshared to confirm to the world slash no one that I am not a liar like my dad. The problem is no one saw our fathers for their abusiveness. If anything, they were the life of the party. I remember when one of my father's friends told me he was a great gift giver. I smiled, recalling that Christmas he gave me two mint cookies and berated me as a classist for saying his gift sucked. Going out to social events with my dad when he decided to invite me and tell people he had another daughter was strange because the room lit up for the very man that was privately doing everything to make me dim. They thought he was charming, honest, lovely, and fun, all attributes he never displayed towards me, but even worse, made sure I could not feel like I had them within myself. For Benito, it was the same. A burgeoning baseball player, his father would go to his games and become the center of attention with funny chats against the opposing team, buying snacks and drinks for everyone around and sparking hilarious banter with anyone sitting next to him. He would turn to them and brag about his boy, and no one knew that part of why his mother did not come to those games is because he would physically beat her so bad, even makeup could not cover the bruising. When Benito was 19 and returning for a Christmas vacay, he beat the absolute ish out of his father. At the time, his father had come in slightly drunk, but mostly in a bad mood. His wife, Benito's mom, had started a change. The loss of Benito as her low-key protector and male partner in a house full of women and girls being assaulted by their dear old dad had revealed to her she was exhausted by the cycle of abuse. In some ways, her entire life was run by deep insecurities and adrenaline, never realizing she deserved better, but always trying to avoid her husband's worst. When Benito was gone, she started to subtly rebel, like making food, never what he requested, and not heating it up again if he did not show up when it was made. On that night, he came in. She did not reheat the food, and a slap was given. Little did he know, Benito was upstairs and overwhelmingly ready to give his father the a whooping he truly deserved. How nobody ended up in the hospital or perhaps the records were disappeared is beyond. Benito's dad ended up do going to his sisters, who would then call Benito to chastise him with a eso no se hace. His mother would eventually pick up her calls, curse his tia out, and defend her son for defending her. Eso no se hace. You don't beat your wife and kids over food. He deserves less teeth. Que se queda me yao. From that day on, his mother would be a single woman, and happily so. Yet Benito began his own uh, trial, trying to redefine love, especially as lasting. Benito would cut off his hand before he touched or hurt a woman. All his ex-girlfriends adored him, and their biggest gripe with, was with how their relationship ended. It just ended. Like a beautiful boat ride filled with dolphins and rainbows suddenly anchored on a wet, moldy dock. 
He never gave signs that he was bored or unhappy and never said anything ill about them. A pure provider in money and love. Yet one day he just walked away and left them stumped to the point that even my words fail in description. I could only describe his act in understanding. When you grow up with violence and abuse, particularly paternal, the idea of love staying, even if it comes in the form of you, in someone else's life just seems impossible. You do not even realize that you are the love you seek, let alone others could want, because you cannot stop going back to the places where your abuser left you and taught you pain. So that episode is Benito, and it was a beautiful, rough episode to write about. Um, it's just really hard when your fathers are so publicly adored and so privately abusive. I think if you, I always tell people, if you met my dad, you wouldn't believe me. And sometimes I think his abusiveness became so toxic and malicious because he knew he had that superpower. He knew that he was smart enough and charming enough to manipulate people into believing he was a good guy. Enough so that a genuinely good person like myself would be doubted. Like, because that's the grand, uh, grand irony of me. Even I doubt how good I am, how I can be better towards others and now towards myself compared to my dad that just had no, he was a PR strategist, you know, just always working in the image. How do I look good? How do I act good? How do I get good if I don't feel it? And I definitely know I can't be it. And Benito's dad was the absolute same. And I think for him, it was just overwhelmingly painful because he was also physically abusive. And people would be like, I love your dad. Oh my God, he's so funny. He's so fun. He's so generous. He's always buying me drinks. And he would leave them to starve. And it's really hard. You know, I wrote about like my dad's friend said he was a great gift giver. And I think my dad would rather throw me in front of a truck than give me two dollars. And it's this strange thing of being so consistently confronted by people who love the, your very abuser and think he's the best thing since sliced bread and he's killing you. He's spiritually, emotionally, and I don't know how his mom didn't end up dead. I don't know. I don't know how his dad didn't end up. I don't know how he didn't end them. I don't know. Miracles? And I think it manifests into uh, uh, an over-questioning of ourselves in terms of how we are loved, how we can be loved, how we are loving, whether love lasts. I think with Benito, like, I can't describe his exit strategy of relationships because I, if I were the woman that dated him, I would be super insecure in the aftermath because here's this person who really builds you in a way that is safe and stabilizing. He's not a love bomber. He really builds like deep, beautiful relationships. And it's almost like George Clooney, like after three to five years, nobody remembers George Clooney's bachelor era. But let's talk about Leo Dicap. Like they just have like almost, everybody thinks it's this age limit, but it's also this time limit that they have of just three to five years I'm out. And I don't know why that is specifically. I really have to look up the psychology of that. I think people just go through cycles within three to seven years. Um, but he just like, he really does. It's not you, it's me. And it, he means it. And I think it's because in the same way I'm very servile in my relationships, I think he is too. Like he really builds his partner. And then I don't want to say I, he has dated wonderful women. I think for me, I've dated horrible people. And eventually I realize it and I exit. I think he just thinks he has, he's horrible. Eventually, like eventually the more stable the relationship becomes and the more anchored it becomes, he realizes his own instability and walks away. But we don't necessarily heal. Like I, when I look at how many horrible people I dated that were exactly like my dad, I don't know how it took me so long to just start a healing process. Like just start 
a healing process. And I don't know if he's healing. I don't want to accuse him in case he hears. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think he is. I think eventually you you want more to heal than you want to keep your fear. You get so, I think, and it, I, his, his mother is a perfect example of just, you just get so, you just get so tired of your own dynamic in these abusive cycles. I really did leave my dad out of boredom. He had hurt me so much and felt so good about it because he would smirk when I cried that I eventually got bored with the dynamic. Like I got so tired of it. And I think that's what happened with Benito's mom, especially when he left in college. It's, it's just this moment of kind of like, oh my God, this could be the rest of my life. Like I could really be the rest of my life being emotionally and physically and mentally and financially battered by this one human being. Nah, I, I think I'm going to go. It's, it's, I can't describe the feeling, but it really is beyond exhaustion and sadness because your abuser, beyond sadness and anger, because your abuser learns to make you handle those feelings and even manipulates them to make you look like you deserve more of his anger and sadness. I really do think it's just one day you're so tired you're so freaking bored and when i think of it in, in benito and his relationships stability is almost too exciting it's too wow like this is happening this is happening this is happening it activates your instability your ego in a way that makes you think either you can't handle this or you need to go and learn how to handle this. And I think that the best way to handle something is to just go through it. But your ego is making sure you don't go through anything good. So I don't know. I hope we all heal. But that was the episode of Benito. Good luck in your healing process. Check out daddyrecovery.com and check out my music on all platforms as Deandra. Yay.